Hello, anonymous strangers on the internet, and welcome to episode two of Rim World Let's Play. Wait, that was backwards. Whatever. Um, as we did last time, we have some beds that we're putting here. There's lots of wildlife here that we're eventually going to hunt and harvest and eat. Um, we're working on cutting down these trees so we can build those beds. These guys, are you are you old and slow? Please tell me you're not. Oh yeah. So this guy's got a bad back, which makes him slow, and he's frail, which makes him slow, and he has dementia, which makes him pleasant to be around, um, and also deaf. And then he, they all have crypto sleep sickness. What that causes is lots and lots of lovely vomiting. Um, a couple aspects I didn't mention is when you first start this game, everybody has new colony optimism and extremely low expectations. This is nice because it keeps them from murdering each other right off the bat. Uh, one of the things that we really need to focus on for now though is collecting our food and getting it over there. This guy's going to take an hour to do anything. Maybe I should have gone with the nobleman who refuses to do work. Um, so this architect tab pretty much covers everything you need to do. We are going to go to structure. You'll notice that I forget where I need to get things from in this game on a regular basis. That's because it's not 100% intuitive. Um, and we're going to build a wooden door. So you'll also notice that they have auto doors and normal doors. I typically don't use the auto doors because they take up some electricity and I haven't noticed them being significantly faster to the point where it makes any difference in my colony. Um, but speaking of electricity, over here in this power tab, we're going to go ahead and build a... build a power plant. Um, I'm trying to decide where I want to do this because this is what we connect our turrets to for our first defenses. And I also want food to be somewhat close to our people. So uh, I don't know. We'll do it here. Why not? This feels right. This can't possibly backfire. Right guys? Right? Right. Um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go structure wooden wall, this won't backfire either. Wooden walls have a tendency to catch on fire. The other thing that has a tendency to catch on fire, as you will surely see, is batteries. But when you don't have geyser technology, you need batteries to keep your things working when it's no longer daytime. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll also notice there is a no roof zone and a roof zone. We're going to finish this up so hopefully we'll have a roof over their heads tonight because it is raining. The good news is it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so if you're not come familiar with my uh, measurements of temperature, that's actually quite, quite warm to my standards because I'm from Seattle, so I feel like it's overwhelmingly hot. Um, to other people, they're like, oh yeah, that's comfortable, luxurious temperature right there, so, you know, teach their own. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is on this map we have these guys, these are muffalo, you can hunt them and eat them. Um, and, oh, please pick that up first. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know what the other thing is, it's left my mind. And it's probably never going to return. So sad. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the pace here because these guys are a little bit slow. But at least we got a couple beds going, which is fantastic because... Sleeping indoors is nice, though according to this, this is still outdoors because we haven't built the wall yet. Or the door, whatever. You're still sleeping in a bed, so, you know, life could be worse. Um, my priorities right now, one, we want to get power going. We want to have a battery system to connect to that power. And then we want to build this indoors. We need a way to get food consistently because if they eat raw food they're not super happy but we do have some food packs still. Um, I thought there were more food packs to start with. Did I just miss them? Part of when you crash land is stuff lands all over the map rather than in a nice contained area where it's easy to find. Um, oh yeah there's lots of food left and he'll, yeah we'll just get someone young like love good, love good knows what's up. Come here, love good. I can never click on these people when we're in speed mode, so prioritize hauling that. Um. Oh, she only picked up one. That's weird. So 
you want to try to get a lot of your supplies over as fast as possible. The bad thing about where I chose to start out is it's pretty far away from there. Um, my last game I had like a sort of water moat, like it was this kind of area blocking where I started and where I ended up uh, having my town exist. And honestly, this town is very close to the edge, but whatever. Um, and so it caused a few living issues. You know, in hindsight, I really probably should have just built here. I just really was greedy for that building, wasn't I? Eh, whatever. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, we might die horribly, but, you know, that's sort of to be expected when you play this game, so I'm not too worried about it. You'll notice the art is actually pretty similar to Prison Architect 2. It's something that I would call, like, an ugly version of Prison Architect, because it doesn't have that cute charming factor. It just has, like, an awkward pixely factor. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Big Red. Come here. Big Red, I would love it if you would harvest us some berries. That would make us all super happy, Big Red. Also, starting somewhere that has berries, sort of like Stone Hearth, is a pretty good call. Um, just because, quite honestly, it's a really simple food source. It's readily available. It's free, you don't have to murder it, it doesn't murder you. Like sometimes when you hunt animals they get pissed off and they come back and want to kill you in your face hole. Uh, this alleviates that issue without any getting murdered in your face hole, which is pretty pretty fantastic if I'm honest. Oh, I remember why I started here. I have silver so I can just mine some money. Yeah, totally worthwhile. Totally worth getting ambushed immediately on the sides. I like it. Though I really do need to build turrets, so... Security? Turrets? Oh, we need batteries first though, otherwise these turrets are going to be useless anyway. Damn it. Damn it, why are you guys so slow? Big Red, what you do? Build, Big Red, build! I thought I'd put batteries in there. Did I not put batteries in there yet? No, I did not. You know why? Because it would have been outdoors at the time. Good news is, these guys are officially sleeping indoors, which is going to make them a lot happier. So if you check their needs tab, they're unhappy that they're sleeping in a group of people, unhappy that they're eating off the floor, but overall, not too bad. Um, another thing I'd like to point out, oh, we should, it looks like you'll be here for a while. That's hurtful. Lovegood is suggesting that you give the colony a name. What should it be called? Ghost Town reason I name it Ghost Town is that's what it will eventually become, unless I play better than I did in my last game. Um, so here, over here in your overview tab, you have a few options. You can set to manual priorities to decide which one's the most important thing for you. Like, I really need to start growing something, and I'm going to probably make this guy prioritize it pretty hard. Uh, I always put Fire Fight at number one. Fires will destroy everything and make everyone unhappy. Um, and then Big Red, you're a slow tank, but I see no reason for you not to prioritize constructing and repairing things. Woo, I can't click. Okay, and then you're... you're good. We're not going to change that. We're just going to leave you as is. That seems fine. Um, who's my doctor, actually? Oh. We're also going to equally prioritize being a doctor. To everything else as well. Um, you'll see here I have an announcement saying you could really use some defenses that would make us really happy. That's because if you don't have turrets or silver turrets if the mood so strikes you, uh, when people come they will murder you horribly. Um, it's important to try to get these somewhat far apart from each other because when they explode they take everything around them with them. I'm actually a little cautious that that wall will come down too, but I think it's okay. Uh, you'll see the shooting range is pretty significant for them too, so it's it's not bad. Build there? Will you build there for me? You won't build my batteries, but you'll build me some turrets. That's fine. That's actually not bad. Bad news is there's a lot of events that will keep you from getting power, such as an eclipse, which makes it so that your solar panel generators are completely useless. Mm. They also have... I don't have a... Food source. Um, they also have solar flares, which are uncomfortable too, for another set of reasons. So let's go ahead and start working on our growing zone. Uh, I like to do my growing zone in direct 
proximity to everything else that I have going on, I'm going to go ahead and do, you know, I'm going to do a couple smaller ones this time, I think, because I did some pretty big ones last time, and I didn't, I didn't really like my variety. So we'll do a couple 4 by 8s uh, I don't have an exact number about what a good ratio is yet. Change your name so to Bradford calls you from nearby. He's been chased by tribes people from the gray rock people. Begs for safety and offers to join your colony. Biologically, he's 29 years old. Be warned, if you accept this, you'll have to fight off the tribes people on his tail. Yeah, that doesn't seem like it's going to backfire. Why not? Come on in, Bradford. You're young, hardworking. Apparently, my hunter doesn't have a weapon. And here's our raid notification. That means that we have angered someone, slash someone wants money. Oh, crap. I forgot I don't have electricity right now because there's an eclipse. Okay, chances are we're going to die. So that's, that's in our future. Let's make some in there. No, let's get here. I don't know. Strawberries are nice. Let's do some strawberries. without a weapon. Who has no weapon? You all have weapons. Look well, good, you have a weapon. You have a weapon. You are not a member of my colony. Kevin's not a member of my colony. Um, I'm trying to see... So the good news is we have some people visiting us right now. The bad news is some people are going... Oh, it's just one guy. Oh, we can definitely take one guy on. Yeah, Bradford, you come to us now. So, here's one option. When you have restrictions, you can set everyone to a restricted area when you're getting attacked. You can go to your zone area and then expand allowed area. You can select the name of your area. Like, later I'll probably not name this area one, but whatever. Um, and then set everyone to that general vicinity. Good thing about this, you'll notice I'm checking a pretty significant area. I just don't want anyone wandering away right now. But I also want them to be available to murder that guy in his face hole. Um, if things go really well, they'll murder that guy in his face hole, but not to the point where he dies, and then he can join my colony, which will be nice. As a prisoner, until I recruit him. Yay. Yeah. That's good, I'm glad it's just one guy. So I automatically got another person to join, and this guy is very slow, but going to come fight us, which I'm fine with. Fight, fight, fight. Who, who's not fighting? Oh, you are fighting. Awesome. That's super awesome. So, we can capture him. The problem with that is I don't have a structure to capture him in, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and build a tiny little structure to capture him in. Bye. Do, do, do. Uh oh, restrictions unrestricted. Uh, we'll just put it here. Have a wooden door. What I don't like about this is I don't feel like it's big enough. So let's actually make that a little bit bigger. Cell, you need to have an enclosed area, which I'm making right now, and then you need to have some beds. So obviously we're going to make wooden beds, because my colonists don't get anything better than a wooden bed. Why would I give you anything better than a wooden bed? Um, and we'll go ahead and throw three in there. We'll probably mine this out eventually and have a little bit more space. Oh my god, Big Red, you're so slow. I'm so glad I have a nice young man joining us. Oh, there's another bed? Group tries for people from the ground to arrive nearby. Is that this guy still? And there's a mad animal that will come over and attack us, but that's fine. Hopefully we'll have electricity eventually. It won't be a big deal. I'm gonna give more people the ability to construct things, because I'm a little irritated that it's going so slowly. 
and they'll move faster is my hope. Yes, excellent. Good job, young people. Continue carrying the weight of the world on your backs. Oh my god, Big Red. Big Red, I love you, man. I super do, but oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we need to give you, I don't know, something to make you not so slow. Need meal source. Oh, I still need to cook, or cook, I need to set up a kitchen. That will help with our lack of a meal source. There we go, excellent. Can I also make you build this? Oh, you are already building that. I love you, love good. Love is good. You're so nice. Yay. Okay, keep going fast though. Okay, so click on the bed, set four prisoners. You can unset it to make it colonists. You can also make a medical prison bed, which is amazing. So instead of continuing to build that, I want you to capture that guy so he doesn't die. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. He's in a medical bed. He should be fine. Maybe he won't be fine. I don't know. I'm not percent sure. Um, I'm so excited for this clips to be over. So, uh, I think we're doing okay as far as our defenses go. I think the next thing for me to do is we're going to go ahead and build an area where we can cook, which will later become our kitchen, and later become some other fun stuff. So, maybe it's interesting. Oh, can I just not get over there? Can I not build? That's weird. I didn't know that. Okay. Let's just close that the edge. Um, we're gonna go ahead and build it like this. It's gonna be a pretty big space. That's fine. And we're gonna have one door to it from here. Just to make it so it's easily accessible. We're gonna probably split this up into a few different areas. Just for now. That's how we'll build it out. Um, we're also gonna go ahead and build a wind wall here. Just to keep everybody out. I like keeping people out. You will notice this. Um, this ended up being a bigger space than I thought. I made some weird choices when I chose this spot. I really should have chose that spot. This spot is better. More defenses just naturally, and then you don't have to build as many huge walls, but whatever. Actually, maybe this isn't going to be a bunch of huge walls. Maybe this will be fine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag this out here, and then drag this down. Nope. Not far enough. My spatial reasoning is equally bad in Prison Architect and in whatever this game is. Room World. Um, I'm actually going to probably deconstruct a couple walls right there, because that's sort of where I want people to come in from. Actually, that's not true. That's not where I want people to come in from. Do I need to go out there for any reason? Okay, I might, I might open that up later, but for now I think this is going to be fine. This will give me access to plenty of steel to start. Um, yeah, this will be fine. It'll be fine. This will give me access to the silver there. Like, I think this is okay. It's not... You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to cancel this. I want access to a little bit more steel, so we'll go over here and then down here. And there. There we go. It's perfect. Beautiful wall. Beautiful. Um, and then we'll go ahead and cancel the wall right here. Be able to get down south here. There's more resources. I haven't been able to find where the plasteel is yet, though. Oh, it's right there. Oh, that's close enough. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's not a big deal. We'll just open that wall up later when we have to get over there, but that's not for quite a while, so I'm completely okay with this. Did I put two turrets here? Okay, this is a bad idea, and here's why. When this turret explodes, so does this turret. So then you just have these guys left. Uh, maybe these turrets won't explode, but that's that's not usually how that goes. So, <laughs> yay! Um, a wanderer joined us, that's cool. A villager named Est has arrived to join the culinary. She is a Glitter World empath. Empaths are usually really good at recruiting people. They're usually pretty useless for everything else, which is true. She's got good social, she's got okay medicine, and she's a masochist who's incapable of violence. That seems interesting. Alright, well, you know, 
whatever. I'm glad you're an optimist. You're just gonna be super happy and hopefully not be the one who murders everyone. That's a good goal for you. I like that about you. You're seven, you're five, you're six. Put that on low priority for you and we'll make you our warden. Um, so here's how you handle your prisoners. Click on your prisoner, click prisoner, click on chat and recruit. That is what I would like my default to be for pretty much everyone. I can't think of anyone where I'm like, you know what I don't want to do today? I do not want to chat and recruit that prisoner. I just want to harvest their organs. By the way, harvesting their organs, super cost and effective. It's much better just to have the extra labor around and create a bunch of beer for money. Beer is a great source of money for everything. <laughs> Including life. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out a couple more power plants, or solar power plants, just because um, I have so many turrets, and that's not a bad thing. And I'm also going to build a wooden research table. You can build any kind of research table that you want. I recommend wooden because it's cheaper. I guess. Um, wood's an easily accessible resource. Eventually it'll run out of steel. Life is hard. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just place that here. And then I'm also going to build a cook stove. I'm going to also keep that down here. Mm, maybe I'll go here. Yeah, I'll build that here. The reason is because you see that little yellow cable that indicates how close to power it is. If I put it here, I have to build more power conduits and I don't want to. So it's a little less pretty, but who cares? Um, and then I'm also going to probably build a butcher table made out of wood. And this does not need electricity, so I'll just clunk it down right here. Um, actually, maybe I won't. What am I going to do? I don't know. So many choices. So what I usually like to do, and the reason I'm sort of hesitating here, is I like to have a refrigerator area right next to the food area, so I'm going to probably eventually build a wall through here so I can refrigerate food. Uh, maybe I'll even do that right now. So let's go ahead and do some orders. Let's chop down some more wood. This wood can go. Um, and we need probably another wooden bed in here too. Ah, okay. Um, and so I'm going to probably turn that into an area to just have, have food. But then I also, hmm, that actually should work fine because then I can put the um, table for people here. I don't like that though where the chairs end up. That's sort of blocking things. That'll only have a few people. What about the short table? This is a little better. Yeah, we can do a short table there. That's fine. Maybe I'll make it bigger or add more tables later, but I don't really need that right now. So, I'm going to do a structure, one wall. Again, wooden walls are not great. You don't want these forever, but you do really, 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 I mean that very strongly, need to get um, your research going. And even though by default, research is put at the lowest end of the priority list, I will usually move that up with one of my colonists just so that we don't have to worry about a lot of the technology issues that if you have it quickly, it solves a lot of problems. Like, for example, yeah, 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 no research burns, so that's fine. Um, geothermal power will solve, like, the eclipse issue. You'll still have power, you'll still have power at night, it's fine. Um, and then you'll still want to have some of your solar panels to help with the influx and a couple batteries, if you can, as long as they don't catch on fire all the time, which mine sometimes do. Um, but... Bradford, you're naked. Bradford, I don't think you arrived here naked. What happened to your clothes, Bradford? Bradford. That's not how you make friends, Bradford. So awkward, Bradford. Whatever. 
Um, but it'll help offset the power that your turrets suck, because, like, they need 350 watts. This produces, like, 1,200. Um, so it'll power a couple of your turrets during the daytime, which is nice. And then we need power to pretty much deal with everything else. Um, so it's, it's good to have, good to have multiple sources of powers. Um, <clears throat> groups of hackers, deserts, traveling through. Well, fortunately for you, I haven't locked that off yet, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see here. You know, I think this might be a good place to end. Um, thank you for watching. We'll go ahead and continue this in our next episode. And we will get our research going. We'll finish building out possibly a refrigeration area and have a place to store food and only food. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Click like if you liked, click subscribe to subscribe. I don't know. You guys know what stuff does. Yay! Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.